Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at hypothesis testing. Uh, we're going to look at it from the point of view of probability distributions and so on. So the first question asks us to define the critical region of a test. Now I'm not going to spend that much time on that part of it because it's really a theory question. Essentially it is the region of rejection of the null hypothesis when the value of the test statistic falls into this region. So you might sort of add in a little example there the sampling distribution of a test statistic and you can sort of remark that the tails would correspond to the critical region on account of the fact that it's highly it's not highly unlikely but it's sort of less likely for a test statistic to be found in the critical region under the null hypothesis something like that okay so that's just a bit of a look up of some notes now let p denote the probability of getting ahead when a given coin is tossed once okay suppose that the hypothesis the null hypothesis p equals 0 0.5 essentially this is a binomial distribution okay where we are looking at the p is probability of a fair coin heads or tails each 50 50 and getting ahead is so the coin is fair 50 50 is rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis h1 p equals 0 0.6 if 10 trials result in seven or more heads, okay, calculate the size and the power of the test. Okay, so essentially the size and the power of the test is, here first off, just to sort of remark that the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis there are P equals 0 0.5 and P equals 0 0.6 respectively. So just sort of state out ex explicitly that what we're dealing with here is binomial random variable. If x is the random variable that denotes, if uh, the random variable x denotes the number of heads in 10 trials of the coin, then x is distributed as a binomial random variable with 10 trials, 10 independent trials, and a probability of a success p of p, p a success being a head, okay? Now, alpha is the size of the test, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. You actually might sort of see that denoted as significance, also, or sorry, stated as significance, okay? Here, we'll just go with the, the uh, what we asked in the question. So, what we're asked here, reject the null hypothesis, probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it, the null hypothesis is actually true. So what we have to do here is calculate this. So this is actually a good bit of number crunching with regard to the binomial distribution. So the probability, uh, what we, uh, let's go back up here and sort of stay seven or more heads, okay? So what is the probability of getting seven or more heads given that P is 0 0.5, assuming that P is 0 0.5, okay? So essentially, this is the, the key part of this question here, okay? That's what we essentially what we have to do. So working it out, probability, well, this is what we have to do. Probability of X greater than or equal to 7 is from X equals 7 to X equals 10. Uh, calculate, this is the uh, PDF of each uh, possible value of X between 7 and 10, 7, 8, 9, and 10, okay? So essentially... What we have to do here is calculate this. What I'm going to do here is break it up into chunks. Okay. Now, luckily, just to start off with, 10 to 7 times 0 0.5 to the power of 7 times 0 0.5 to the power of 3. That will work out to be 0 0.5 to the power of 10. Okay. Which is what we get here. Okay. And what we get here and what we get down below. So there should be a zero there, one zero. Disregard that. And in each case, that works out to be 0 0.00, three zeros, 0 0.000976. Okay. So what we have to do is essentially in this case is just calculate the binomial coefficients. In each case, multiply it by that number and get, get each probability value there. In this case, it's 120 by 0 0.000976. We get 0 0.11718. In the next case, we get 0 0.043945. You don't have to go to so many decimal places. I'm just sort of working with a, using what I uh, got from when I wrote it out uh, on my calculator. Just copy and paste it in. So we have to do it for each of these three. 
0.00976. So eight is 0 0.043945. X equal to nine is 0 0.00976. X equal to 10. There we go. Just that is one, essentially 0 0.000976. Oh, and just add that all up. And we get 0 0.17, 0 0.1718. Seven five, okay. Now uh, you might use have tables to work with that as well, okay. Or if you're using R, you can just type this in here and just type in this following bit of code: uh, p binome six ten zero point five. Okay, Th that's how you could check that if you're using R programming language or, or using tables if you're doing it by pen and paper you have to do it the long way just like I've done there okay so that is the answer to the first one so the answer is 17% that there's a probability of um, assuming that we you know making a, an incorrect conclusion is 17% under the null hypothesis so the power of the test is rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is false. So in this case, we sort of would sort of use the alternative hypothesis here. So what we're gonna sort of say is reject the null hypothesis given that the probability of uh, P is actually 0 0.6, okay? In a nutshell, this is what we have to do. Calculate that. Now this is a very similar sort of calculation to the one I've just done. So I'll just sort of breeze by very quickly and we should find the probability of x equal to 7 to be 0 0.21499. Z probability of x equal to 8 equals 0 0.120932. x equal to 9, 0 0.040310. And probability of x equal to 10, 0 0.006046. Again, I'm actually just using the default number of decimal places there. It's just to sort of, if you trying to work this out in the calculator and you just want to be very thorough you probably would not have to go to that many decimal places in an exam situation but i'm just trying to be as faithful as possible so that allow you the margin of error just to sort of see how close you can get okay uh when we add them up there we should get 0 0.3823 which is again a very substantial number uh of uh of uh making an incorrect conclusion but there you go and okay we'll just remember it's a small sample size and we're it's fairly arbitrary um just again what you could do here if you want to check that using r i'll just write it out here one minus p binome uh, six ten and 0 0.6 okay correctly what this does is calculates the probability of x less than or equal to six. Now, uh, there are actually additional arguments you can make to uh, find it directly without uh, uh, looking at the complement, but uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I'll just keep it simple. You know, there are other ways, there are other functions that you can do call directly using uh, p binome without going one minus p binome that will give you the answer, but we won't get into those. So, yeah, that's it. We'll leave it there. So that's hypothesis testing and calculating the size and power of a test.